Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rukar Kwadash, and double honor to the apostles, those that have told me this truth through the inspiration and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and I'm um, giving also the salutations they wrap towards the Yakim that's forwarding this truth throughout the four corners of the earth with the same spirit. And Shalom to the brothers and as well as the sisters that are heeding as well. Out of sincerity is the brother Laban coming at you in another video. And this article is from the spectator.co.uk. As this reads, um, why should straight white men pass the power? <laughs> All right. So um, let's read on. It says, if you happen to be walking through Southwark this week, you might have been accussed by a big public sign. Hey, straight white man. The bill, bill, the, excuse me, the billboard bellowed past the power. Similar billboards apparently cropped up in other equally squalid parts of London. <laughs> oh man, this guy. And they are by a black artist from Marseille called Nandina. It will not come as a surprise to anyone who has seen her work to learn that Nadina is self-taught. Her other street art includes posters saying never forget George Floyd and nobody is free until Palestine is free. <laughs> it is brought to us by a gallery run so far as I can see by two white males. And I'm not going to read any further. I just want to elaborate on, you know, what we see here, <clears throat> which was posted outside um, Southwark, London, which is um, a, a town which is located in southeast London. And usually, you don't really see messages like this as, as bold as, as this one as it stands. And I mean, you know, to a degree, and this is not really the point that I really want to make in this video, but I'm going to just speak on this and saying, um, you know, Jake is gradually coming around the idea that he saw the problem now. You know, years prior, you know, Jake was like, of believing that maybe these Edomites, and I mean, some do think like this to this to this very moment in time, but not not so greatly as as the past, you know. But nowadays, Jake is starting to realize that he solves the problem, and um, <laughs> this is why you got this kind of stuff out here that's being posted, which was uh, done by so-called black women, as you can see here. I went on the. Uh, the website, the gallery org.co.uk, and it was um, done by this woman here, Nadina Ali, which I don't know what she believes in. I'm 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 guessing that she's uh, probably a part of the Nation of Islam or something to that equivalent. I could be wrong in saying that, but um, this message was able to be stationed in, in, in the middle of the street in, in Southwark, you know, which is something that you don't usually, you know, see or something that is not even allowed, right? So for, th for this to be allowed in the times that we're living in right now, you know, is definitely symbolic. And that's really what I want to focus on and focus you brothers and sisters on is that this is a symbolic message because usually, like I said, you don't see this kind of messaging at all you know, post it like this, especially in the streets of London. So why is this the case? Because we're in a time of change of worlds. And as an, as an outsider looking into the world, as we are the potential men of the Lord, the potential elect of the heavenly father, we do look out for signs and wonders that the average person doesn't see, but there's signs literally, <laughs> as you can see a literal sign, which is basically very blatant. Like this one indeed. And it reminds me of the scripture. In um, 2nd Ezra 6. And I'll begin by reading verse 7 to verse 9. Then answered I and said. What shall be the parting. Asunder of the times. Or when shall be the end. Of the first and the beginning of it that followeth. And he said unto me. From Abraham unto Isaac. When Jacob and Esau were born of him. Jacob's hand held the first, the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. 
So we're in the end of the world and who's ruling? Esau is ruling right now. As vocab would, would love for you to believe that the Edomites no longer exist anymore because ultimately he's hoping like hell that he's not an Edomite. All right. Because if they are the Edomites, they have to bear the burden of the judgments concerning that nation. Moving forward, um, Daniel's the seventh chapter. And I want to begin by reading um, verse 9. The Ancient of Days reigns. I like how they have these head titles. I beheld till the thrones were cast out, and the Ancient of Days did sit. And what do the thrones represent? The thrones represented all of the previous empires. Now, when you read the book of Daniel's, the seventh chapter, it speaks about a statue with all of these different metals on it. Or should I say the beasts? It mentions the four beasts, excuse me. It mentions the four the four beasts. And those four beasts represent every empire which came after the other. And um when you read the first couple of verses. Excuse me, when you read the first couple of verses, um, it lists all of the those different empires, but you have to inter you have to get the, the correct interpretation and know exactly what beast represents what empire, as we already understand that, right? So after you read all of those empires, guess what it mentions about the ancient of days? Why does it mention the ancient of days? Because the ancient of days is going to set up the kingdom through his son Yahweh Shai. That's going to be the next kingdom. After all of these paganistic kingdoms which have came there before, this one. And this one will be an everlasting kingdom. So let's read verse 9 again. And I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool, and his throne was like the fiery flames and his wills as the burning of fire. So the hair of his head was like the pure wool, which is in relation to the book of Revelations 1 and 14, specifying and elaborating on the projection of what our, our Lord and our Savior looked like, which the only nation of people which has woolly hair is so-called Negroes, so-called black people, have you will. We're the only nation of people that have this kind of textured hair. And even some brothers and sisters, even from the northern kingdom, has this kind of texture of hair, but more in particular than so-called Negroes. So the Lord was a so-called black man. And as well as his son who was a so-called black man, which died on the cross for our sins. So as it reads, his throne was like the fiery flame and his will as burning fire in the chariots. Verse 10, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto them. The thousands and thousands of chariots, which is what this is talking about. And tens, thousands, time ten thousands stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened as it is yet this very moment in time. We're in the time where the books are being opened. Why do you think that the prophets are out in the highways and the hedges reading the scriptures? Because they understand the scriptures, those secrets which are revealed to them. As it is written, the Lord do nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto the servants, the prophets. So now that the secrets have been revealed to us in this book, which is the Bible, we're publicating these things now. So we're in a time of the prophets revealing the books. And in that time, that's when the Lord is going to come back. Uh, verse 11, I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beasts were slain. Excuse me, was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. So there you have it right here. Yeah, so um, there's some more. Exactly, there's some more. And as concerning, yeah, I've read that. Did I read it already? No, I didn't. Verse 12, and as concerning the rest of the beasts, the rest of the previous paganistic empires, which came there before this one, they had their domin dominion taken away, and yet their lives were prolonged for a season in time. The son of man presented Daniel uh, Salakia, Daniel 7 and 13. I saw in the night vision and, be and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven 
That's exactly what I was talking about when I was elaborating on this right here, this scripture. So the thousands of thousands represents the, the clouds, which are indeed the chariots, which the Son of Man is going to come with, as it is written. I'm going to read this again. One like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Right? And there was given him a dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages should serve him. And his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So as a whole collective, this is representing the nation of Israel, which will be in the power seat. So once the paganistic empires come to fruition, through these other nations. And once they endure for a season and a time. Once their time is up. Then we're going to be the ones to be next into the seat of power. And um, this empire that we're in right now. Is nothing more than the last leg of the Roman Empire. And to be more specific. The ten toes. Which represents the ten horns. We're, we're on the, um, the, the last part of the statue. Which is the, uh, the ten toes. The end of your body is your toes. Right? So we're at the end. We're at the end part of the statue that Daniel envisioned. And as well as Nebuchadnezzar envisioned. But he couldn't interpret. So we're at the last part of the human body. Or the statue of, which looks like a human body. Which is the ten toes. <clears throat> so um, there you have it right there. So that's why it makes mention of the Ancient of Days and as well as, as it specifies as it just read speaking about this kingdom which will be an everlasting kingdom which the saints will possess. Now we're going to jump down to verse 18 but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever. And that's it. That's all we need to basically read from there. So this is what this is symbolic of, man. Hey, straight white man, <laughs> past the power, which really they're not white men. They're really the red people that the Bible speaks about. There's nothing really white about them at all. All right. They range from a light pink, which pink is a derivative of red, to looking as red as a strawberry in some cases. Okay. Or even if you smack them upside the head, they'll have like red blotches on, on their skin. When the heat is affecting them or when you when they get smacked upside the head or or they fall and pretty much hurt themselves. You know, you'll see the red blotches on their skin. So they're really the red people that the Bible speaks about. Hence is why their biblical nationality is that of Edom, which in the Hebrew, the word red is Adam or Adawamya. Excuse me. I said that wrong. The word red is Adawamya or Adawam, which means red. So now we're going to move forward and we're going to read the book of Ecclesiasticus, or should I say Sirach chapter 10. And we're going to read verse 4 to be exact. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. And the one that is profitable is the nation of Israel because they have the laws, statutes, and commandments, which they will pass through onto these other nations, and these other nations will uphold these these um, standards, which we'll, we're we're going to pass down to them. All right. So the only nation that will be profitable, which has the knowledge, is the saints, which is soon to come. Indeed, let's read on. In the hand of the Most High is the prosperity of man, and upon the persons of the scribes shall he lay his honor. So there you have it. So the reason why this so-called white man is in the, the position of power is so that the Heavenly Father can fulfill all of these beasts coming into their position of power in their own due time. And as we must know and understand that the Heavenly Father is a power of his words. He is not a power that he should lie, nor repent of his words. That's in the book of Numbers 23, verse 19, and also Isaiah 55, verse 11. So shall his word be that go forth out of his mouth, it shall not return unto him void, 
but they shall accomplish that which he pleases. So the heavenly father is a power of his words. All right. This is why we're not in power yet. And other things thereafter have to come to pass before we get into the seat of power. So now let's move forward and we're going to read the book of Amos, the ninth chapter. Verse 13, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Yahweh, that the plowman sh shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that sow seed and the mountains shall drop sweet wine and all of the hills shall melt. And um, the, a plowman is just another way of saying a work, someone that just works for somebody else, right? Which is what we are yet this day in doing in our captivity. And I just want to get the book of uh, Deuteronomy what is it? Um, 28 and 33. I believe it's 33 to verse 35. So we're going to pull that out. You the spirit. Yeah, this is it right here. This is uh, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away. So we're only going to be oppressed, and we're going to just be laboring for the other nations that were under. So that's the curse which came upon us. And these are the words which Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they will encounter a series of curses if they didn't keep the commandments and one of those curses which is what i'm pinpointing is the fact that we would only but labor you know never to really own you know highly um exponentially progressive businesses so to speak but more in particular working for someone else and if you want to start your own business you have to go to the banks which are owned by these amalekites more in particular as it is also written in the book of Deuteronomy for the one of all things. Let me see if I can read that anyway. Um, there, you, there you have it. This is it. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 48. And therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So that's the situation we're in right now. And we have been. We have experienced through our ancestors having yokes upon our neck. Now, if you type in um, an iron yoke or just a yoke of iron, if you type in yoke of iron, what, what are you going to see? You're going to see a so-called Negro. With a yoke of iron on his neck, no other race of people has that happened to but our people. Showing you who the Israelites are right there and there as Google gives it away. All right. And um, but going back to what I was saying before is that we're going to serve our enemies for the want of all things. So if you need a job, you got to go to him. You, you want to start a business, you got to go to him. And overall, your enemy is going to basically be able to determine whether you deserve that or not. <laughs> all right. That's the power that that. Um, this devil has over the nation of Israel right now due to our sins. So this is why um, when you read over here, something's going to change. And what's going to change? Let's read this again. Behold, the days come, save the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. So we're going to be the ones overtaking those that are reaped over our labors. That's the change that's going to happen. So going back to this sign over here, 
which was um, posted and stationed in Southwark, which is um, in southeast London, which is where the bulk of our people are at. You know, here you have it. Hey, straight white men pass the power, which is symbolic of what we're now in the time of a changing of worlds. We're at the end of Esau's world, coming in, transitioning to the world of Jacob. And I'm not talking about this individual that looks like he just got up from death, Jacob Rothschild. I'm talking about our people, the nation of Israel, those that once upon a time were actually known as Jacobites. You know, during the time when he was in England, ruling in England. Okay? We're going to be the ones next in power, descendants of Jacob which his name was later changed to Israel because he fought the angel. All right, so um, there you go. One last scripture that I want to read, um, Isaiah 26 and verse 6. Let's begin by reading verse 4. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord, Yahweh, is everlasting strength. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high. The lofty city, he lave it low, he lave it low, even to the ground. He bringeth it even to the dust. The foot shall tread it down and even the feet of the poor and the steps of the needy. So we're going to overtake the power structure. And this is going to happen by the power and might of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. As it is written in the book of Luke. So like, as it is written in the book of Luke. The 21st chapter, and I believe it's the 24th verse where it reads, The powers of the powers on earth shall be shaken. So it's going to be by Yahweh Shai, which is going to get rid of Esau from his power and establish his everlasting dominion with the rest of the saints, those that are a part of the elect, which are the 144,000, and as well as those that are a part of that, that peaceable multitude, have you will. All right. So with that, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son, Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Avakar Kwadash. And yes, indeed, Esau will pass the power. Shalom.